I'd like to call this meeting to order. Miami Township Trustees, May 20th. I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of May 6th. I move. I second. I have a correction. I have a correction or a clarification or something like that. On um, page, the top of page five, let's see, where, where could page four be? On the back of three. No. One, one and three, five by itself. So that, that probably answers that question. Because it looks like it goes from cemetery. Does anybody have their minutes with them? I do. And you have a base four? Cool. Let me we'll just make sure. Three, four, yeah. Let me just make sure that you have that. All right, well, that answers that question. I'll get those back to you directly. Uh, on page five, under new old business, uh, there's a second paragraph that says, we moved to executive session, blah, 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 for some reason. Meeting recessed at 6.20. Now, the next paragraph down, it, it said that the executive session had been productive and the decision would be made in two weeks as further issues need to be resolved. It's a little, I thought that was a little confusing is that the is that the act is that the action as a result of the executive session? I guess there was no action. There, the end of the that's what I'm saying. There was no action, but then there's a there's like an action being a decision which would be made in two weeks. That was kind of an action. Anyway, that was the way it was worded when I got the house here. Uh, and, and then we're going to have a discussion as opposed to a or a debate. Right, that word was changed. I would, um, I would it, like the, the word I was scared with this discussion and a contentious discussion ensued. Thank you. Is that your. Do you have any other comments? Nope. I'm good. No, is that I, I sent them to her earlier this week. Um, and they were already changed. There were two, well, apparently only had two minor clarifications for spelling. Okay. Yeah. Well, we call the roll. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the May 6, 2024 meeting as amended. Mr. Uh, Mr. Woodrum? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Adopted? I entertain a motion to <coughs> approve payment of bills uh, for expenses $40,121.17. I second. I mean, I, From I, the general fund, $9,847.23. Cemetery, $3,853.25. Fire, $22,322.08. On road, $4,098.61. I move that we pay our bills. Second. <coughs> Second. Discussion? No. We'll call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to approve the payment of bills in the amount of $40,121.17 as enumerated. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, from our correspondence list, do you have any anything to add to the, the agenda? Well, I, um, co we do correspondence or adding to agenda? Oh, from, from the correspondence. The correspondence. Um, I'm not going to I, read through all the correspondence. I personally have a few comments. Um, Okay. The, the Frank Cook, um, the um, Ohio Fire Chief Association Organizational Assessment came in. Um, it asked the, both the 
trustees and the fire chief to um, proofread. No, no recommendations have been. That, that was the draft without the recommendations. If, if, if everybody caught that. That's so, right. so you would like to have on our agenda a discussion of the report? No, I wouldn't. I would just like to say that then and I decided that by Friday we'll ha all have any, any comments that that then should take back to them. Mm -hmm. So Friday, if you have anything that you want to, any feedback you want to give to. Without recommendations. Correct. This is any feedback. This is essentially, Josh, like, like Marilyn said, just proofreading the document. I see. And if there's any sections of it that you sh don't feel should necessarily be in there, that's the opportunity. Or, or any inaccuracies. But what I'm yes. saying, what I'm saying, Chris, is that he told us, you might have caught this, that this is a draft of it without their recommendations. The, is, is it a, I don't understand. There's, there are no recommendations in it right now, so we're still waiting on that. Well, I certainly noticed there were no recommendations in yeah. there. Now yeah, you know why. There's no I hope question you're really about the Is there a timeline for when those have, will be made? Um, that's part of why I want to get it off on get it back our feedback back to him on Friday, um, okay. and then I'll I'll ask him at that point how long he thinks the turnaround will be. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a good answer. Okay. Any other items in the correspondence? If I may, the Hope Taft invite for the leadership float. If you've not, never gone down that to that, it's I'm, quite I'm, fun. And I've already signed up. Awesome. Um, that's it. Uh, I have a suggestion, if I might put it out. I'm not saying plus or minus, but it just came to me the other day. Seems as though we've gotten to the point where the correspondence is kind of a antiquated, the way we're doing it, it's kind of an antiquated um, system. I mean, we've gotten to the point where 90 plus percent of correspondence comes digitally, electronically, and we're all reading that prior to a meeting. So why am I printing out all these emails and setting them on this table where no offense, but not many people read them because they've already read them prior to the to the meeting. Now, if something comes by mail and you know it's it's whatever it is, and whoever opens the mail uh, wants to thinks it's worth our attention and wants to set it on the table, that's fine, and we could report that. And if there's anything in the email, you could bring it to the board and say, you know, I'd like to discuss this email that we received. Tuesday or Wednesday about such and such. Anybody have a thought on that? Well, I think Don's been asking you that for a few years, haven't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Let's make that table our show and tell table. Okay. And I'll bring you what I put on the table. Nah. There must be something to show and tell. It. Chris, I noticed that you take all the correspondence and put it in a, in a box and put it in storage would you still have to print it out to do that or is that something that people don't do anymore we'll talk about that later bring this up that's that's good show that's good anyway so thank you we'll, we'll change that i would think appropriate correspondence for record keeping purposes would be printed out and kept it in the records file. But not like an invitation to the... Right. Flow down the river. Right. Right. Okay. Um, well, we did get correspondence relating to street fair and chamber requests from, from Chamber of Commerce, uh, which we could discuss now. I, I shall we put it in new business? Well, I put it under public. Um, there's at least one person in the room who's hoping that we do it first. So we can leave. <laughs> I've got kids to feed. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, are there other items from the public uh, that are not already on the agenda? Mr. Chamber. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here, guys. 
I'm Ryan Carp. Uh, I live in Yellow Springs. I have a business here uh, in town, and I am the vice chair of the Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce, for those of you who don't know me. So I am here to answer any questions about this letter. It is essentially a letter request saying um, that we think it would be of value for both the Chamber and the Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce to formalize the agreement that the township is already providing, which is you have consistently provided resources and time of the street fair of both uh, October and June. And so this would be an agreement that would allow us to also honor and recognize you through some of our marketing as well, too. So we would recognize that you, the township, would be contributing baseline 5000 for each street fair um, engagements. So um, it is not a recommendation that we change the level of care that you are already providing for street fair. So again, there is no more or less work to be done. This is just an agreement that we have continually had that relationship between our nonprofit board and the township. Um, I have a quick question. I'm shoot. somewhat confused. So, in the past, we have diligently worked to try and be remunerated for some portion of the of the amount of work that we put in and the uh, uh, payroll for the staff that has to do it. Sure. It's, D Danny, are we somewhere? Last time it was. Twenty five hundred, three grand, something like that, that we build them. Mm -hmm. So you keep paying that, and then what's the five? I, I, I don't understand. So the five would be a part of the in kind agreement, or who's paying the five? You are already paying the five through the in kind service provided. Well, that's true. So, so we therefore. It would just be five on the books, but not twenty five hundred in cash for us. We would not re receive any money for our work. Is that correct? That is what this document is suggesting. Mm -hmm. We're open to discussion about that. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I guess that you know that's really a decision almost better left to the fire chief simply because it's his department who's doing the work mm -hmm. and his department who is paying for people to do that work mm -hmm. and then usually at the end of the year they come back and say you know well you know we've done 10,000 worth but you know as usual we do only going to charge a small percentage of what we've you know actually put in sure and we'll go okay fine it'd be nice to have the full amount but you know we'll, we'll, we'll pony up that that difference yeah I mean here's how I look at it guys it is the chamber is looking to do a long-term budget allocation so we can be consistent with our forecasts right mm -hmm. and so I, I think in the past there have been varying levels of uh, from different agencies that sometimes are lower, sometimes are higher, and we are trying to get a baseline budget of those services. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I think that's the driving force of it, so that we can say, "Hey, street fair consistently costs X amount of dollars going forward. We will owe the township X amount of dollars, and they will uh, contribute X amount of man hours." And this is the agreement going forward, right? So that we can adjust our budget accordingly over a long-term agreement, right? So this is the first step of us saying, okay, here's what we think might be agreeable. Mm -hmm. If we have different ideas about that and how to budget those things, we're all ears, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this was our first stab at saying, okay, well, let's put something on paper and have a, discuss, a discussion about it. it. It almost sounds too reasonable to say, okay, we're putting... Five thousand worth of effort into it, we would just like to be remunerated for the twenty five hundred, which we've tried to be remunerated in the past. Mm -hmm. Some things changed with personal change, and the 
Yeah, I don't want to get into that, but that's the that that was the latest amount. Mm -hmm. So, Denny, Don, Marilyn, what's your idea? What's your thoughts on? We are already putting the five thousand dollars in. We would just like to have half of that back for our our efforts. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a. You're not running in the red, right, on your street pairs. No, we're, we're profitable. Okay. And, and I believe you're paying the village for their services, correct? Correct. So, you know, I think this, again, to go back to budgetary needs long-term projections, is to say, okay, what is the scope of services that the township has committed to provide on an annual basis for street fare? Mm -hmm. right? So that mm -hmm. we, the chamber, understand the labor involved in it, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's billed hourly or by person or by overtime, X amount, right? Well, we've had that document, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, well, make Great. sure you had it. And, and so this would be a standardized, okay, our expectation is X amount of dollars going forward, mm -hmm. and then anything above that amount mm -hmm. is billed directly to the chamber. Um, what already is, but the owners. Anything above the $5,000 in service then is billed to the chamber. So if the amount goes above the 5000 the way I understand this agreement written, then the chamber would compensate for that. When we build them, do we build them for what it actually costs or what they're actually paying? For? There, there are set fees for uh, any tents that are used, uh, and there's a set fee for um, festival a festival permit that is based on the number of expected attendees um, and for the chamber you know it's our, our, for street fair it's you know usually around 15 15,000 or so although the difference in the next jump up is I think around $50 it's not very much but does it say we've done this 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 and it costs us $5,500 we would like you to pay 2500 or it, does it not reflect like it doesn't? It doesn't do that, but that's certainly something I could prepare. So when they get, when we got it, when they paid us $2,500 last time, the invoice said $2,500. It was the $2,500 was yep. Well, I don't know the answer to this question, but that could change. Like you could, you could give them, and I think what you're looking for is the true cost. What, what are we, tr what, it, what are we truly expending for it? Correct. And how much in kind that's easy. We, yeah, we realize that you guys are cutting us a deal on the services that you're provided already, right? Let's just recognize that already. You already contribute a large amount of resources for the street fair, right? Um, and we are extremely appreciative of, of that. Um, and we would never want to put more demands on your resources. But we would also like to say, okay, well, here's what we actually did for you, and then here's what we're going to build you for, right? And whatever that amount, that, that's open for discussion, right? We put a number on $5,000. If we want to discuss it as being more or less, great. At least we're having a conversation about those amounts, and then everything above that amount would be billed to the chamber. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. And one thing that we need to that you understand we, well, we all agree on is we have transitioned obviously from a volunteer fire department to a, to a paid fire department. Mm -hmm. When we did street fairs in the past, we had for all intents and purposes no out of pocket to, to, to have to pay mm -hmm. the people who are on staff. Sure. Fast forward to today, we're, we're paying every single person probably time and a half to be there <coughs> and who knows what other expenses on, on top of that? Yeah. That, so, you know, those are actual real life costs, not just, you know, we, we were there protecting, you know, we were there standing around waiting, you know, if there was something happened, which in the past, which is basically it, we were manning a, a, a firefighter's booth in front of the bank and giving away or selling water, I don't remember which, and raising money, et cetera, et cetera, but waiting for some emergency that might happen and we had a medic or two sitting in the in the back and you know we'd jump in and take care of whoever it was mm -hmm. so keeping that in mind we'll let the 
chief work out some of these numbers, um, bring them to us, and we'll send them to you. And one hundred percent, Don. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm speaking for the board. I'm interested in my colleagues. Uh, opinion. I'm, I really have no strong notion either way. Um, Alex had, had said to me that, um, that the level of the village of the um, of the villages um, in kind is what. I'd have to look into that. Yeah. Um, one thing that struck me is he asked us to match the village in in kind donations, and one thing I pointed out to him was we have a. $2.5 million budget and they have a $20 million budget. I mean, it's... <coughs> it's... We're... And I'm not sure we've been... Whereas... I'm not sure we benefit as much as the village or, or, or have the same mission or that the village has as far as economic development. And, and listen, I, we get it. Right. We just wanted to present it equally okay. and then have you figure it out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so we respect the decision that you guys make. You are in charge of your own fiscal responsibility, so you just let us know. Well, I heard sometime last year, and it wasn't from the police chief, but I heard <laughs> that they were being, they were billing for like $50,000. Did you hear any of those numbers? I don't remember that as a number, but I know it was pretty so. substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of money. And don't get me wrong, I know they've done, a, you know, they're doing an awful lot of work. And, you know, these are highly paid people and, I would have to and a lot of equipment. Sure. But in comparison, you know, our little 2500 bucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. I, I was like a bargain. Sure. Okay. Well, the, the coming street fair is June 8th, correct? I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second Saturday. And uh, what we're, what you fundamentally you're after a long term plan commitment. Yeah, pattern. and like uh, you know, it, this would also allow us again. We realize that you are donating resources that are not being accounted for because we have a good working relationship, and we're thankful for that. This would also allow us to say, hey, you know, the township is financially contributing X amount of dollars and then we would also treat you as a as a sponsor and recognize you formally for whatever increment that you think is fair as well to, to put it on our promotional material. Again, not that you're, you know, in the same world as promotional material for small businesses, but it was another thing to say, okay, well if all of these organizations that we're working with, including the village and the township, are fundamentally donating time and resources, which is money, how do we equate that in our promotions as well, too? What difference would it make to you if we didn't make any commitment until... I mean, we didn't agree on what we're donating. We're, we're definitely going to staff on the 8th. Yeah. But I, if we didn't make, take any action until the 3rd... I think that would be prudent. You, you know, whenever we're making a financial decision, you shouldn't be doing it under a hard deadline. That's going to quickly. So, because I read your letter two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I don't have it in front of me, and I don't have the numbers, uh, the ballpark numbers, but I get it. Those numbers, we mean Alex discovered. I, I can't hear you. Those Alex, mean, those numbers mean Alex discovered were not. <coughs> Completely accurate, mm -hmm. or not very accurate. Brian, when is our next? I would invest too much in the meeting. I don't have that information. I can't, I mean, I can't remember. Same. I can look on the website, but. Um, well, we are committed to staffing on the eighth, correct? Yes. Can we postpone until the third? Our formal. Yeah. Specifics. Yeah, well, we don't have we don't have the numbers yet, so yeah. we're gonna have to. Oh, yeah, totally. Sure. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, thanks for the consideration. That's all. That's all we're here talking about. Right? Um, Alex, in that letter and over the phone, brought up one other thing that we might as well talk about tonight, 
and that is, as he explained it to me, um, odd fellows stopped doing the fireworks. They said, here's a chunk of cash. Good luck, guys, in the future. You guys have enough to kind of get you through maybe the year. And then the chamber really, it wasn't really a purview, but you wanted to take it. You wanted to keep going. I wouldn't describe it in those terms, oh. but sure. So Which terms were different? So the terms were the odd fellows were running it for a long time, 100%. And we're very respectful to the odd fellows. Um, and, and they, like many nonprofits, had, um, they didn't have the manpower that they once did, right? And it was a select few that were organizing it. And so they approached the chamber and said, hey, can you help with this? It seems like you have more resources doing event management, right? Uh, and since um, one of our leadership members had a relationship with the Odd Fellows, we decided it would be a good fit. And last year was our first year doing it. Okay, and so we took on the responsibilities of doing that. They had, they had been running a deficit for quite some time. Right? They've been self-funding. And, and, and just to give you an idea, most municipalities do not have a, a self-funding nonprofit running, you know, the local fireworks. It, it is. 95% funded by the municipality or the township or, or a combination of those two, right? So um, the chamber wanted to keep this event going and I was the fool that raised my hand and said, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and head this thing up. Uh, and again, the chief has been extremely helpful both last year and this year so far, as well as the village and, and um, other members. But we said, how do we make this thing sustainable? The first year is the one we just want to continue the chain and make sure that it is a seamless transition. And that was last year. I think it went pretty darn well because no one noticed any changes whatsoever, which is fantastic. But we still ran at a deficit, right? We ran at roughly the same numbers that we had before we took it over at the Odd Fellows, but it was about, I don't have the numbers, new years, which in the grand scheme of um, these celebrations is actually pretty inexpensive for the level of show that we're getting. So I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, I use the same joke that I did at our meeting. The prices of fireworks are too volatile to map out long term. Anyone? <laughs> no one? Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so we are trying to get a consistent pledge that we can say here is our consistent budget without putting so much um, again, the chamber is not a large volunteer board. We have a good, consistent member, but it's, it's 8 to 12 members doing everything, guys. It's not like we're a huge mm -hmm. entity, right? And so we're saying, well, instead of grinding out in the same way that the Odd Fellows did and meeting their same fate five to ten years later, let's shore up long-term funding from the agencies that are already partnering with us, right? So that's all this ask is, I'd say. Um, and I think the request amount was 3500 so 3,500 times three. There you go. That is where we got to get. Community Foundation Village and Township. Correct. That's what we're asking. Um, and again, we, to my knowledge, Alex might know more than I do, but I, I do not know the increments that they have pledged to this amount. But that is the reason behind it. Um, if we receive more than the 10,000 in both contributions and pledges from the agencies we will allocate that towards future fireworks shows to make them larger. But also I think a buffer, being a financial person, I like having a buffer when and not if the prices skyrocket. Uh, See what I did there? Well done, Ryan. Yeah, thanks. I did not think it did well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the past, what have we done special additional staffing on our quarter? Um, not so much because we we have we have the regular staff that's on duty, but we kind of run the you know, co for the board. So it it's we have people there, but we're not necessarily paying extra people to be there under those circumstances, just because it's a it's a social activity. Do, for the do you respond from the fireworks then? Yes. So you, you're, you're having a cook out there, but you respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In an effort to be fair to the township, which is, you know, obviously this is why we were elected, was to be good stewards, hopefully, of money. Um, <laughs> Uh, 
$3,500 each. Let's just, we have $3,500 each political subdivision or contributor. Since Marilyn mentioned that the village budget is roughly 10 times what the township budget is, why would we not commit to a one-tenth amount of what the village is contributing to be our contribution? Are you asking me? Uh, I'm just putting it out to the world. I mean, is, is that not fair, or am I missing something? I'm a financial manager in my own profession, so, uh, you know, if, if your argument is to save money, I, I will never fight you on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to me, the increment was based on the ongoing price and the conversation about what each entity produces or what their responsibility is to it is unique to themselves, right? And what is fair and what is appropriate. Again, ultimately, you're the elected officials, and that is your responsibility. <coughs> our responsibility is to say, here is, here is our strategy to carry this forward in a, in a responsible financial way. Let's open up a dialogue. So, Well, you know, the old axiom about a, a failing business is, how do you fix it? You either raise the prices or you cut the costs. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess in your well, I don't know. I, I you know, you could raise the price by getting more people to donate. We are doing that. Okay, right now. You, you in theory, you could cut the cost by instead of a ten thousand dollars show, you could do a seventy five hundred dollars show. I do not think the community would respond um, well to a cut in cost. But but to your point, sure. I, I don't know y'all, but Don, I know, has been here since since the earth moved <laughs> a while ago. But back in the day, the fireworks were kind of a meager show. I, I mean, there was like, you know, and then a minute or two later, it was... And then there was a couple of duds, and then, you know, one more. And then within 10 minutes, it was, okay, everybody, thanks for coming. I, I think you said, okay, I think he's not asking ask, ask, ask us how, how to, what what level of show to put on. He's asking us if we want to contribute. And but we're suggesting there is a way to make this, make, make this work other than us Paying more money. I mean, if you if you reduce your expenses, then you don't need to collect as much. Have we donated to the? I don't remember. Traditionally, we donate five hundred dollars a year. What else do we donate to? Well, many things. We donate to a lot of things. Uh, let's. I'll bring that up later. Let's make the biggest one the Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation. That we've donated. Uh, that's a little $50,000, $60,000 to, and I'm still looking for the ROI on that, but we won't get into that at the moment. <coughs> yeah, I will take that feedback. Um, Before you do, I, 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 sure. want the, I want the other members of the board to, to weigh in on this. I, I favor continuing at our $500 level and... Uh, And we'll wait till the next meeting for deciding about street fair. What's your tilt? I think we could do better than 500. Um, that seems seems a little weird. Um, part, part of my position is I also remember when a house burned down because of the fireworks. <coughs> Well, we do have insurance for that. Well, I don't know what happened um, there. We looked, up, we looked into drones. Um, we looked into drones. Uh, it'll go from 10,000 to 160,000. So I imagine. Um, that's always a possibility. We did look into it, though. And the show would be well, five to ten minutes less. I would, I would entertain a motion of some size. I, okay. We're, 
Street fair is June 8th. We're deciding that on June 3rd. Fourth of July is what date is it? Fourth of July? It's a month and a half. <coughs> so, do we have to decide tonight? I, I think they. You're, you're the one who, who brought it up. Don, I, I object to that. We were invited. We were had a proposal sent to us. Don, you're, you're the one who said you wanted to talk about it tonight. We said had a proposal sent to the Chamber of Commerce. I'm the, I'm the one who, to, who gave them a response. Mm -hmm. if, if, if we want to all just not respond to committee entities that, that ask us things, then yes, you could say I'm the one that brought it up. But I, 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 I really you, tonight you said you would like to bring it up, and so we're talking about it. Okay. And if you think we could continue talking another time, I'm comfortable with that too. And I would also just like to put out a vote for contributing less dollars for the 4th of July fireworks is a vote against America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank Lord. you for that attention cutter. <laughs> as long as you didn't bring up Trump, I don't care what you say. <laughs> I would... Be, I would be comfortable if it came to a vote tonight to to uh, to vote for a contribution of not more than a thousand dollars, and it would take almost an, an act of God to get me to do a whole lot more than a thousand dollars at any particular time. So that's. Do you remember how many years it is that we've contributed five hundred? Uh, uh, not very many. Okay, half a dozen tops. It okay. used to be two fifty. Okay, I had no idea. And I would also like to say thank you for your ongoing contributions because we appreciate that. And, it, and if all that was decided that you continue to contribute, we're still appreciative to that. Well, we want to be a responsible contributing member of the village, the township, and the, the area because I swear half these people come from Cincinnati. Yeah, and we, and we had conversations and said, okay, how do we expand revenue? And, and that would mean making it larger, which would mean making it rowdier, which would mean more infrastructure staff, which would mean it's less of a village and township focus. Mm -hmm. So in order to drive revenue from the populace, we would have to turn it into a different event. Mm -hmm. So I think more street fair, less small town. Mm -hmm. And I think it's personally, and, and people may disagree with me, personally I like the size. And I think we lose something if we grow it out more. Mm -hmm. um, but that was discussed. And, I, and I'm still open to that, having that conversation. Maybe it changes years from now, but right now, just to let you know, we did look and say, okay, what if we sell you know, more food, more alcohol, more? we get more people, we charge tickets, and it just, the proposition value just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, For many, many, many years, as a small business owner, I was approached by the, uh oh, I was the. Of course, it was the Oddfellows at one time, but it was the um, the other people. <laughs> the organization. Lions. Lions, of course. Yeah. The lions. For a contribution, you know, just I mean, they would walk in and say, "This is your yearly. This is almost Fourth of July. How much are you going to give us?" And you know, whatever, whatever it was, I did. Are you still doing that to businesses? I mean, up and down. The village we have a letter writing campaign mm -hmm. which we have um, a spreadsheet of people that have historically written um, historically we've excuse me put an advertisement in the Yellow Springs News mm -hmm. and then I don't know if you've been but we are hustling up and down the Gaunt Park with our little buckets of donations mm -hmm. as well as family sure. dollars so we do have a volunteer force there are we going door to door knocking on the individual businesses? I don't. I don't think we're doing that. I mean, certainly we could do that, but mm -hmm. we are doing those types of activities and have been mm -hmm. since we assumed um, mm -hmm. responsibility for it. I, I just wonder how successful that that is. But as opposed to going to and making a personal contact with somebody. But again, it, that is not the chamber's responsibility to be jangling buck. I, that's not what we're good at, right? If that's another agency um, that's going to be door knocking and asking for individual funds from the chamber or for the fireworks, I get it, but that is an allocation of resources that it's not going to be efficient use of our time. Okay, that's a little confusing, but I don't want to get down that road. Well, do we <coughs> want to make a decision tonight or? 
continue discussion. So we got a motion. <coughs> well, I'll I'll go to the max and and we contribute a thousand dollars to this year, this year's Fourth of July. Wait here a second. Fireworks. Are you second? No. I'm asking if there's a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? Um, no, not at this time. Pardon? No, not at this time, except for that, since it's an act of God that Mutual would, would take Mutual to go higher, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't have, I don't have any connects that way, any connections. Uh, that's a joke, Chris, in case you're wondering. So, I think we'll move to a second. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. It's been moved and seconded to contribute $1,000 towards the 2024 July 4th fireworks program. Uh, Mr. Mutual? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you for doubling your contribution. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming here this evening, and thank you for taking on the project, uh, the thankless project, yeah. I might add. <laughs> it's, hey, listen, I'm learning a lot. It's a great event. It's, it's fantastic. And, and, you know, just having small kids that go to it every year, and, and all of us have those, mem uh, you know, those memories, uh, and hopefully someday our kids will bring their kids, and on and on it goes. So... Uh, we love doing it. We just want to make it, you know, sustainable and efficient, just like everybody else. Uh, one hint is don't be very successful at what you're doing, because if you do, well, Ryan, I've got a, I've got a pr proposition for you. You know, <laughs> we need a, we need a director of this, that, or something else. I, I'm sh well, to be fair, I think that's why we got the Fourth of July in the first place. Right. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to be here, <coughs> and we will. Uh, assumedly come to a decision. We yeah. will continue discussion. Just thanks so much for, for uh, having us. Our next meeting, yeah. not just discussion. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll work on this number mm -hmm. this week. Yeah, we'll have and Chief Powell, we, about we appreciate all the work that you're doing with us yeah. ongoing. Like, with likewise. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Ryan. Chuck, thanks. good to see you. See you, Ryan. Fire Department report. Okay, uh, trying to keep this kind of brief. Um, so we had 36 EMS calls since the uh, last meeting, eight fire. Uh, we had mutual aid requests for one fire. Uh, we received uh, two uh, mutual aid fire and three mutual aid EMS. We actually had four different incidences where we were dispatched back to back on EMS calls. So. Uh, spring summer is here because that's when we really see those numbers escalate. EMS calls? Yeah. Yeah, tip, EMS calls and the back to back stuff. I mean, there were two that were literally dispatched within a minute of each other. Um, I'm, I'm curious on the mutual aid we got, who were they from? Uh, Xenia Township for the EMS stuff, Cedarville and Xenia Township provider. Uh, Brush 81, looking in around mid June, we should have the pump in. Um, and, uh, and work on getting that truck back. I didn't get a return phone call. Um, the gentleman who's kind of coordinating Engine 81's repairs was on vacation all last week. Um, so hopefully I'll hear from him in a day or so. And I'll, if, I, if I get any additional info, I'll update you guys via email. Uh, we already talked about OFCA draft and, and getting feedback by Friday. Ideal if you can give me that feedback. Um, probably uh, like before noon or so, so I'm able to compile it and, and send that to Frank. That would be helpful. Uh, I'm, we had a massive construction meeting for the initial uh, school building buildings project um, that had all the key stakeholders from uh, school, construction, village, um, uh, you know, utility, so forth, uh, police department, myself, and just really kind of a round robin going around looking at what are the things just really kind of try and 
establish a cohesive group so that that project can can be successful from uh, from everybody's angle. Um, so we'll most definitely be having more meetings, but it was uh, extremely positive. It was basically a three hour long meeting that I did not feel was anything wasted. You know, and there was no time wasted on it. So that was, that was great. Uh, have the potential for a house um, to, to do live fire training in. I'm gonna go out Wednesday morning and take a look at that and see how, how feasible that is. Um, we also purchased a power washer uh, just in the last few days or so, we're going to start working on building things with that, especially windows, bay door windows and that. So you'll see that bill come along, but um, just to kind of give you just a little heads up on that, because we're trying to address some of that um, since we have a lot of windows. <laughs> and the expenditure report may be a little inaccurate. I'm not sure if I actually had all the bills on that. Um, uh, they were not available to me uh, to go completely over today. And that's all I have. Well, we <coughs> had two months of discussions about uh, different personnel structure and initiatives and uh, with entertain we have a series of motions, resolutions to propose. Chris, do you want? I have the first one. I need a number. Send 21. 2024, 20, 21. Thank you. <coughs> I'm going to make a motion to adopt a resolution 2024 21. This is a resolution to appoint a fire chief in Miami Township. Fire and Rescue. Resolution reads, whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township are empowered by the State of Ohio to appoint a fire chief for the Miami Township Fire District, and whereas Danny Powell has performed these duties, excuse me, has performed the duties of interim fire chief from August 11th, 2023 to the present, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township does hereby appoint interim chief Danny Powell to the position of fire chief of the Miami Township Fire Department effective immediately. Date is May 20th, 2024. Uh, is Why there a second? There a second? No second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. call, call the roll. I've been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2024 21. Uh, to appoint Chief Danny Powell as fire chief for the township. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Are you doing number two? I am. Okay. I have resolution. I'd like to propose Miami Township Resolution 2024-22. Um, First, want to recap um, how we got to this point. How, it, how about if we put that in discussion? Let's just read the resolution. Okay. Reclassification of three full time positions. Whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township are empowered by the state of Ohio to provide for the employment of firefighters as it considers best and shall fix their compensation and whereas preliminary financial analysis reports demonstrates the reclassification to be cost neutral and whereas this reclassification is expected to provide operational stability and improvement in the delivery of the fire and rescue services to the citizens of Miami Township. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township does hereby approve the reclassification of three full-time non-pensioned staff positions into three full-time pensioned staff positions effective immediately. Um, Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? You, want to uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to give the background or summary? Okay. Chris, do you have anything to say? No. 
I think it's a great idea. I have supported the idea for a year plus now. So. Yeah, and, and maybe, I've, yeah, I agree. Um, and I, I will go ahead and speak then. Um, if only if you're done, though. Sure, I am. Um, so, I need some notes. As you know, at April 1st, we, um, Chief, was the first time we proposed it. Um, to use um, this move as a as a means of fire, fighter retention and um, in, in the form of due diligence in the form of verifying the financial impact of the proposal was requested and discussed at length we all know that um, then offered was an alternative incentive um, to pay for all staff in, in the non-pension classification um, a raise plus a dollar um, plus a one-time bonus. Um, after several weeks, consensus could not be reached on the clear path. Uh, we sought help of a consultant to, to perform the due diligence and assess the options and conduct a financial and operational assessment. Um, and this work was done really quickly. It, we, it was completed in one week of very, very hard work. and. Uh, the findings include this, the original proposal cost less than the alternative proposal, which we kind of knew already, but we were trying to buy it. We, I, I thought we needed to buy ourselves time. Um, the original proposal to create three additional full-time pension positions was found to be cost neutral. And there are two offsets, meaning um, funds that we won't be spending now that can go toward it, which include um, the immediate reduction in staff due to overtime and the resulted savings related to reduced staffing because the increased hours of the the new the three new full-time people. Um, operational and cultural benefits were also considered that should be expected as, as a result of approval, including reducing the staffing burden um, and having a second full-time firefighter assigned to every shift and a succession pathway for officers, more consistency in our operation and other intangible cultural benefits. So that's what were the findings that we, we had for the week. I would like to specifically thank you for pushing on or recommending <coughs> connecting us with consultant that dug in over the last week and a half, or not a half, eight days, um, and who will be with us for a couple more weeks at least. Um, we. Okay. Want to say anything else? No, I don't. I'm, Do I'm finished. Uh, we call the roll. Been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-22, reclassification of three full-time positions for the United County Fire Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Hooch. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. The resolution is adopted. There's more. Uh, I move consideration of resolution 2024-23 appointment of firefighters EMTs. Whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township are empowered by the state of Ohio to provide for the employment of firefighters as it considers best and shall fix their compensation. And whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township has reclassified three full-time non-pensioned staff positions to become three full-time pensioned staff positions effective May 21st, 2024, and whereas the above described full-time pension staff positions are at this time vacant, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township accept the recommendation of Miami Township Fire Chief Danny Powell to appoint the following firefighters EMTs. 
Cassidy Brewer and Gavin Van Meter to fill two of the vacancies with the stipulation that each appointee acquire paramedic EMT-P certification in the state of Ohio within two years of this, this appointment. The third vacancy will be filled at a later date upon the recommendation of the fire chief. A second. Any discussion? Have none. Shall we call the roll? We move and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-23, appointment of firefighters, EMTs, as specified. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Mutu. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Resolution is adopted. I will find, I will sign these. Oh, yeah, the meeting's not over. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a bit. Cemetery Road Report. Before we go to that, I'd like to back up to fire services real quick. Yes. And I'd like to make a motion that we uh, offer a temporary position to our ongoing consultant, Fred Clouser. Yes. Clouser. Clouser. I know it's, it's hard to get the. Yeah. You want to say Kraus, but it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for uh, for purposes of uh, personnel clarification or discussion or. Procedures, procedures, or, or maybe mediation. I'm not sure how this is going to go. That's why we're asking him to take a look at this. And do we need to say dollar figures or just open that up? We will. I assume we will ask him when we ask him to take on the position uh, yeah, that's right. for that's right. a. A window of fees, you know, that he might think is for uh, specific tasks yeah, that don't uh -huh. do for us. So, what's the wording again? <laughs> <laughs> I need something more, more clear. Okay. <laughs> um, I move. We would like to. We are going to offer a position to our current consultant, Fred Clauser. Clauser. I guess. Sorry. Um, to help us with an additional set of circumstances that we need to have addressed pertaining to personnel matters. Am I missing anything there? I was just wondering, are we offering them a position or are we contracting well, with them? You said you were offering a position, but I guess it's... Uh, well, uh, yeah, it temporary... Position. I, I don't know if we'll be contracting with him or we're all rolling it into the one we already have. I don't know. It's up to him, really. I would say to do it. Document. Yeah. It my, yeah. I, it's my understanding. He said very, a very clear document with a very clear price, and he can, and he's going to give us a report and deliver on it, and then and then we'll open up another proposal of what he can do for us. So. Perhaps you're saying. Yeah that we ask uh, our current uh, consultant uh, to uh, propose an extension contract with further services. Is that what I hear you saying? You're intending? Yeah, as long as we're fairly clear on what we're, what we're asking him to do. Well, he has to specify. We. Well, I think that's what we're specifying. You know, for f purposes of personnel clarification. Yeah. What we're trying, as, as I understand, what we're trying to do is Careful. open up to further services beyond what he's already contracted for. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we would like to legally authorize that before our next meeting. Is that, okay, is that our intent? 
I think we have to wait on the words. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the next meeting got to do with it? Well, I mean, we don't want to wait that, that long. So we don't want to wait that long. Then we don't have the specifics either in the detail of mm -hmm. the services or the amount. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that he's helped us tremendously and, uh, and that we need more. Maybe that is a conversation that I could have with him and get some suggestions um, directly from him as far as scope. I, I think this is a contract between the trustees. Yeah. And so I, 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 pr I feel more comfortable with the trust okay. trustees. Well, I think Marilyn's correct. Okay. We understand he'll be here tomorrow. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my original idea is to allocate money to for, to for further services, not to exceed something, and then I give ourselves a, like a blanket certificate. <laughs> I, I feel... I have that. But as long as it gets done... Uh, yeah, I would, I'd rather not put okay. a dollar amount on the table if we don't know the exact services. Like we did for the solar contract, <laughs> for the solar attorney. Not to exceed, and that's exactly what we did with the solar attorney. We, we just uh, put, put something down not to exceed this amount, and then we opened up the... And that's true, attorney. although it was much... I felt more, it was clear what, what the outcome okay. was. Well, however you guys want to do it. Well, <laughs> Cindy, you had enough to make a yeah. stab at it. <laughs> uh, well, we have a motion to offer additional contract, contemporary contract contracting consulting positions, offer temporary contracting positions to the current consultant to address additional personnel matters, dollars and hours to be determined. I think that'll fly. So that and you move that? that? Will that? Do you want to put his name in just to? I don't have it in front of me. But okay. I will. Yes, and I don't want to. I don't want to mispronounce it, misspell it. But I will make sure it's made. Yes. Does that is that reasonably what your uh, your so wishes are? So I hear a, mo a motion in those words. I'll second. And a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Moocher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion is approved. And I will work on the moving out the wording and adding the name. <laughs> Cemetery Road Report. Our, I got a text from our uh, sexton and road superintendent saying that he was not going to come to the meeting because he was busy mowing and weed whacking at the Clifton Cemetery uh, this coming week uh, is getting ready for Memorial Day Chris, do you have any information? What's been? I know there've been two burials on a this last weekend. There were two burials and one cremation interment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all within 20 minutes of each other. It was very tight. Um, I do know that they have uh, have had 11 foundations that they've had to install. Uh, for pending monuments to be delivered before Memorial Day. Uh, I believe that work has been accomplished. I don't think there was any last minute, every once in a while we get a last minute request for a foundation that they got to go back out and do it. But I think they were able just to do, uh, and I don't remember the breakdown of Clifton and, 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 and Glen Forest, so sorry about that. Um, we will have it when the, you know, when the report comes out. Um, other than that, for uh, for cemetery, 
they're, you know, they're, they're also working, which I don't think they've done anything further on because of the need for mowing and, and the foundations of laying this gravel drive out, but it, that'll get done eventually. Um, I thought there was something else, but I don't recall what it is at the moment. That's it for Cemetery Road. Um, I haven't, I, haven't been, I haven't been here the weekend, so I didn't drive the roads. Uh, I'm not sure how that is. Uh, I know Don has, or Dan, Don, Dan has been doing some mowing <laughs> along some of the <coughs> higher road, the berms that have been needing it, uh, and, but not anywhere near done with the whole, with the whole town <coughs> yet. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, the, the, the grass on those berms are not that high you know, at, at this point. And usually we wait till around the 15th of May, although it was an early spring uh, this year, uh, to allow for critters to get out of the, you know, to have their babies and get out of the culverts and along the fence rows and things before we before we mow. So he's probably not really pushing that. Um, two things uh, out of the ordinary is Dan and I discussed the possibility of us including, we talked about it at our last meeting about chip seal or about fog coating, excuse me, chip sealing North River Road and fog sealing Harbison Road. Uh, the North River Road cost was around 16000 uh, The uh, The Harbison Road fog sealing was about 5600 I think. And they had all already. They had also put in the price for chip sealing Harmison. I guess they didn't understand that we hadn't requested that to begin with, but they just they put it in, and it was twenty thousand and, and a couple of bucks. Uh, Dan and I chewed this over um, last week at some point, and we thought that what the difference would have been, you know, if. If we chip seal Harvison, then we don't fog coat it this year. We'd probably wait two years, which is the normal letting it settle time before we do that. Um, so if we chip seal it, we'd only be looking at roughly fifteen thousand dollars to chip seal the whole road, uh, which I think is very good, and it's uh, uh, it's the be it's the best um, provider of chip seal and Ray Hensley in, in Springfield that, that we've had in the past. So we would be. You know, we'd be uh, very assured of a good job of that. Um, it, it's it's not. I mean, it's fifteen thousand dollars, but it is really very little effect on the road and bridge uh, amounts of money that they have. Keep in mind that they they have different sources of income. They've got road and bridge income, which is a taxed, uh, which is taxed. To the, to the public. We've got gas tax in, in income, which obviously comes from the sale of gasoline around the state, and it's all divvied up between townships. We've got permissive motor vehicle license, and we've got motor vehicle license, which is money that have never been able to explain, but basically it's a, it's a $5 fee on, on license plates that comes back to the, to the township. And then there's another little one that comes back. But you add all of those together, and we have the road, road, road department has approximately three hundred thousand uh, dollars in two thousand twenty four to to spend. Their normal budget is right around eighty thousand, so that leaves a fair chunk of change in in their accounts, which would certainly cover you know any and all road repair and other things that may come, <coughs> which I'll get to in a second. But I want to be very clear to the for the public and the people here that departments that depend upon taxed in in inside millage tax. This is not voted. This is inside millage, which we are uh, up to up to uh, one per one mil uh, of inside millage for the for the township. That all other political subdivisions that are different. Um, the county auditor can assign that money. To us, based on a need, we we, we show a need. We've got payroll. We've got gas. We've got whatever it is. We've got fire engines. Well, not fire engines because there's no inside millage for the fire department. It's all tax millage, which is fine. And then they they distribute the money to us based on our our need. And generally, in the past, we would have to go to a budget meeting in uh, in July or August at the at the at the 
uh, at the auditor's office and we'd have to justify the money that we are requesting in the budget for the next year, justify that uh, based on questions the auditor, you know, why do you have $50,000 that's unappropriated, you know, rolling over into next year? You haven't earmarked that for anything and then you have to justify that. Now keep in mind that if you do that and you go to that budget meeting, if they require one this year, and we don't know if they are, if they were to say, now you've got, and they can't do anything with gas tax, they can't do anything with permissive motor vehicle, they can't do anything with motor vehicle license, they can only do something with the inside millage money which is in the, which is in the uh, road and bridge fund, which generates 75, 85,000, somewhere around that, somewhere around that a year. If that money doesn't look like it's all been appropriated correctly and completely, in theory, the auditor can say, we're going to take this excess money back from you and return it to the taxpayer. And so then you're not going to have it to spend. I don't know where our budget's, what our budget is going to look like in these different accounts for 25, but it's just something that we, you know, we need to be uh, cautious about of having a lot of extra money that's unappropriated or uh, uncommitted to. Along, uh, if that uh, along meeting happens, it's going to happen before July 1st. No, it would happen before. July 20th when we um, when we have to submit our budget to the budget commission it may actually do it two weeks after because I think the budget commission would then look at those numbers and decide what to do with it anyway if I might just pontificate a little bit further uh, I think I told you at our last meeting that unfortunately one of our township mowers the one that is used almost exclusively at Clifton Cemetery. Uh, the largest, we have two, and the largest and the newest of the two, uh, and, and it's a 72-inch it's a deck um, on the mower, and it's four-wheel drive, and it's, <coughs> and it's a zero-turn mower. It's, it's pretty much the, the, the top of the heap of a John Deere mower, and um, the reason that we get it is because Clifton has a lot of steep, which we don't have in Glen Forest, although we're not married, they have a lot of steep slopes that need to be mowed. And the four-wheel drive is very important to have that, to, to, to keep stability on those, on those slopes. Uh, the zero turn is uh, obviously very important to get in between headstones. So that mower bit the dust a couple of weeks ago. The transmission um, failed it. Uh, this was this was not dissimilar to the engine failing on, on on the dump truck a couple of months ago. It just was just one of those things that a, a gear inside the transmission decided to leave work one one day early, and the cost to repair it uh, for the age that it is, although it's not terribly old, it's not. <coughs> And it's not at the end of its life cycle. It might be two thirds to the end. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, the cost to repair it uh, is bumping up against the cost to replace it, especially if you consider the life cycle that it's going through. You know, nobody wants to spend this kind of money, but the replacement of it is 42,000, um, which is about a $9,200 discount off of the quote, retail price. And this is Koning Equipment, who we've used for many years in, Ur in Urbana to provide us with John Deere equipment. Um, this is not on state bid. State bid does, doesn't do, unfortunately, uh, mowing equipment. Uh, they're more for excavators. Because the mowing equipment is a, sh a shorter lifespan than, than an excavator, a backhoe, or a, a truck. So we're we're in need of this mower. Uh, we certainly have the money. One thing I thought we might do is is think about going to the Clifton Cemetery Board and saying, you know, this is a somewhat of an extenuating circumstance. 
we know that we charge you five seventy five or five ninety five an hour uh, on top of the the the, the, uh, the employee cost to do work in the cemetery uh, for for depreciation on the equipment. As I say, this is sort of a special circumstance. Uh, would the board be would the board consider making a one one time lump sum uh, payment uh, of their choosing to towards the purchase of this mower? As I say, this is a mower that really is is a, is almost 100 percent committed to working in the how, in the how long, cemetery. How long did we have the previous mower? The the service life on them is roughly uh, 18 to 22 years. I believe this one is 12 to 14 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the Clifton Cemetery Board would uh, would look favorably at that request. Uh, that would be great if you would present that to them at their next meeting. Obviously, we need this more ordered like tomorrow because we've got grass that's growing like a weed. Uh, and so I would ask the board uh, to entertain a motion to purchase this John Deere lawnmower, which I don't have the number for because my printer won't print. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll get all that information. But it's roughly 42000 So. Nope. Right now, you're asking. Right now, us. Yes, I'm asking us to approve the purchase of this new mower. At roughly forty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. Is this a motion? I, I will make that motion. Yes, sir. I'm confused. Are we like we have to second before we comment? That's the general routine, but wouldn't have to. I'll second. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't questioning whether second or not. Um, second. Okay. Um, so we had a, we had forty two thousand. We had we had a very expensive mower that we had very bad. One of those really bummer things where a really nice machine breaks or before it's time, mm -hmm. and we we might have excess of money of like eighty thousand or something. Mm -hmm. Approximately, that's what we're talking about. Money that we, if we don't spend down, it looks like we don't need it, and and then. Yeah, you know, we can buy this out of gas tax. We can buy it yeah, from yeah, all the other funds. Yeah, I, I just wanted to throw yeah, that out yeah. for us to keep in that mind. Was just perfect. And then so that's forty-two, and we use it exclusively for them. And we make money off it because we we charge them, like we make money off this machine anyway because we charge them to to do the service. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, we we basically we, we, we get money. I wouldn't call it make money. Yeah, <laughs> it costs. I mean, it dies. <laughs> well, it's in cemetery, so it's the cemetery. The cost gets die. covered. I mean, we have to yeah, pay. We have to pay. The cost gets covered. Yeah. The cost gets covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it if it if it lives its nice long life, yeah. yes, because it's a it's a five dollar and yeah. ninety five cent per hour depreciation cost for the equipment. Now that's not just this mower. We have two mowers, and we have weed eaters. Mm, who knows what else is out there? But that's that's for everything. Appreciation for everything. Yeah. Sure. That's all I have to say. Um. Well, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, authorize purchase of the mower for approximately forty-two thousand dollars. Okay. Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Motion is approved. Mm -hmm. These, the things, okay. These things are, um, it's, it's really hard to put a number on, but the old mower that doesn't work, it costs a fortune to do it. I, 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 I'm going to try and get some value out of it, but I'm not sure how much, I have no idea how much value there might be. Um, I mean, is it a parts? Parts, yeah, is it basically. Similar mower to the one we have. The one we're getting. Yeah. It's virtually identical. Oh, I was hoping it'd be like souped up and make their jobs a lot nicer and faster. No, there's no air conditioning. There's no heating. Oh. <laughs> there's well, no. Well, I thought maybe it cuts better. There might be a cigarette lighter. Brandon would appreciate that. But anyway, <laughs> um, 
So uh, I think we'll just drag the thing out near the road and put a for sale sign on it. To see if we get any bites, you know, maybe for a, parts. Maybe a, a former zoning inspector might be interested in it. Let me see, it, see it out there. That's possible. Yeah. So that, that's that's why I didn't include that, you know, in in this in this price. You know, mm-hmm. well, we're going to offset the price, the forty-two thousand by. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars for the no, it's not going to be ten thousand dollars. It's like used ambulances; you can't give them away, um, right, Danny? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We had a discussion about this maybe a year and a half ago, similarly about the roads crew, where you you made the um, you made the argument to the point that we could really use some sort of shed to cover our brand new dump trucks and mm-hmm. things. And that's a similar idea. We have this. Excess money, so yeah, that was then, that was my idea back then. And, uh, I mean, it still is, but yeah, I mean, it, I think the only um, thing I, I questioned back then, I know I um, offended you with it. That 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 I, I don't, I still don't know the proper procedure. You said, hey, want to build a shed? Yeah, let's build a shed. Okay, about forty thousand, let's build a shed. And I, I don't really even know what the proper procedure is to. If I had to build a shed, I, I wouldn't know how to present it. I mean, present it to us or present it? Present it to a, us, yeah. This is, this is the 40000 This is what it's going to look like. This is why we picked it this way. And this is, well, we're not going to take bids because we don't have to. Or we're going to take bids because we have to. Yeah. How's it look? These are the reasons. We're going to try to fit these two dump trucks. I don't even know if we have two dump trucks anymore. But I, I, the, yeah, we do. The, the only reason I ever questioned that was because it, it, the process just seems so casual and it, it isn't it isn't it, it, it's casual it's not casual to you and I because we have no idea where to go to get this done mm-hmm. you know we google up sheds you know utility sheds or something like that and, and Joe the shed guy mm-hmm. and I got stung by that with the shed at Glen Forest which I'm sorry about yeah. although it still works and all but it's not what I thought it was going to be but anyway so that's what we would do to try and find somebody who does it and we'd say, you know, could you draw up a plan or something and could you give us a price or somewhere around yeah. Dan will go and I, and I don't know this for sure, but I, I'll, I would almost bet a fair amount of money on that. Dan will go to the people he knows in Xenia Township, people he knows in Bath Township, people he knows in Spring Valley Township and ask them where they got theirs how much it was, was was the person who put it up good. Um, For example, the one in Clifton that was put up 10 years-ish ago was Morton Building, and they they did a very good job. They weren't cheap, but um, they did did a good job. It was Morton out of some small town somewhere. Well, it looks good. Yeah. So, So as I say, you know, He'll he'll be able to get these things that you're asking about mm-hmm. cleared up before, way before we would make yeah. a commitment on it. And then we all say, well, that shit's kind of weird looking, or that, that uh, this is a good deal, so that us, et cetera, this is what we're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you still think that, I know this is off topic, but you still think, and I, I just probably think we got that nice new, um, we got nice new equipment that we've invested in. And, it, um, if we had money that we've been that is sitting there, mm-hmm. it'd be nice. Yeah, maybe yeah. follow that up. Um, I have something related to Natural Prairie. Mm-hmm. Well, are we doing the the, the committee things? So was that under? We're doing our Did we report. No, this is still. Oh, so those are not in Boulder. What happened with the thought this tipsy? Yeah, what happened to that? Yeah, yeah. We kind of went off. Okay, but did we have the mower vote? The mower is voted. Okay, the mower. We didn't have anything to vote on the chip seal, did we? Did we we vote last two weeks ago? We we did on on the abbreviated chip seal. We were going to chip seal North River, and we were going to fog coat harvester two weeks ago. Yes. Dan and I are suggesting that we chip seal both North River and. Harvison for a net additional of fifteen thousand. That's twenty minus five to the bar. Yeah, so we need a vote on that. 
I will make the motion. I'll second. I think we've discussed it. Chip <laughs> sealing both of those for an additional, so it would be 37 40 total, as opposed to the original 22 something. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I'm second to approve the. Oh, yeah. To approve chip sealing for North River Road and. Harbison Road. 15 and 16, so you're looking at 31. For an estimated 31 stuff. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the motion passed last week. Right. Okay. Which was approximately 20. Right. Like that's the here or there. I'm sorry, I have a, there was a motion. Was there a second? Yes. Um, moved and seconded, Mr. Mr. Yes. Ms. Morris. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. That motion is also approved. I'd like to refer to two weeks ago when we uh, authorized the Natural Burial Committee to find and hire an expert to manage the natural burial areas. Um, how fast is that likely to develop? How fast? This evening? I mean, have you, do, have you found and hired an expert? I have not. Okay. We, have, we have not. I've been quite busy this week. Um, yes, yes, have we all? I went to a presentation by oh, David okay. Nolan. Oh, yeah, I've heard of his name. Where do I know that from? He's retired uh, conservation director of Fly River Metro Parks. Yeah. And he. Yeah. This is directly our township. What is our township? But I got this map of. You can look at it on, yes, on, on the table. The original. Of uh, vegetation as of around 1800 in this area. And he spoke about uh, the maintenance of different kinds of landscapes, including prairies. Mm -hmm. Uh, by Native Americans using oh. fire uh -huh. uh, over uh, it's not a universally agreed notion but he thinks thousands of years of consistent management of landscape uh, and in this there was some reference to or he's been the mind behind uh Huffman Prairie. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, and that's, mm -hmm. as I understand it, been always been part of it, has always been a prairie. Uh, by always within <laughs> European <laughs> reference or American reference. Uh, and that he talked he talked about the sort of prairie turf and the difference between trying to maintain a prairie that has been that way for hundreds of years versus for five or ten years. Um, and I would urge, uh, he, he, let, he, he spoke to the Historical Society Sunday afternoon and spoke to his new taught at the Outdoor Education Center. He loves Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, he may well be able to... Okay, I can, I can, okay. David Newhart would have his contact. Cool. You can just... They answer the phone, actually. At the Newhart. Oh. You, could, well, I you can call there. Right. Uh, that's my thank you, Don, for that connection. Anything else on cemetery and roads? Uh, we have nothing from the fiscal officer other than there was a message from her. Did didn't you see it? I don't um, guess so. <coughs> I mean, we we got. Came the trustees, but the fund 
I mean, we got the printouts of our funds, but what else? Oh, we, I'm sorry, I skipped over. I was thinking of zoning inspector, not this question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there, there was an email from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she, she apologized for not being here tonight, and I informed her that she, she, she only needs to attend the first meeting of the month. Yep. That is our the zoning, zoning inspector. inspector. Yeah. We have nothing from the fiscal officer. Standing committee reports. Oh, does anybody have the message in front of them from the zoning inspector about what she's been working on since our last meeting? I guess not. Do we, do I, we I don't want to. We'll wait. Normally we just wait until her okay, we'll wait until um, next, next did time. She, did she send something reporting on? Oh, I, I, yeah. I must have missed it. it must she, have just, she just said she was less busy than the pre previous two weeks. <coughs> yeah, but then she listed two or three items that she oh. was working on. Yeah. Hmm. Well, she can report on that in two weeks. Sure. Hmm. And VRPC? And well, again, there's a lot of transportation. Those transportation dollars just are pouring in. And Yellow Springs at the MBRPC was doing something special, and everybody's celebrating them. It's something they're having some kind of study done here. Um, one really interesting thing was the presenter. I think I told you about a year ago that... Um, they have great data that the Miami Conservative District has great data that shows after hundreds of years of pretty um, 200 years of steady rainfall in the last 30 years we're up an average of five five inches of rain per year and that there have been many more events um, that the, the Arthur Morgan dams you know the, the capturing events the, a, great, a huge rise in the capturing events no um, you know a lot of some people think they were overbuilt and, um, and and would never reach their capacity, but now we're starting to see that there's there there's um there's met, if, if you know how they work, it, it, they don't stop water unless there's too much water, and then they then they collect it and spread it over the plains. Well, they what they presented last week was it, um, that there's some sort of maintenance fund that you might know about way back from that time. How how does that how do those get um, paid for and sustained? This doesn't have to be very much in the minutes. And there's some kind of thing where they get these special judges. They're actually circuit court judges or something who determined, you know, how, how, how the assessments will be. And only the people who are in the area that are affected by the flood over history has, have paid into that for the maintenance of this dam system that's protecting the whole Miami Valley. And... Um, they have to go back to these judges and, and do a reassessment and they're thinking and then they start stop, wait a minute. Maybe it may be time for a different funding model. These these dams need work. They, they they're still in great shape but they need uh, they need a big investment and that they're going to stop and kind of really look hard and reinvent the funding maintenance model for those dams and, and, and who might share in those costs. So that was very interesting. You heard it here first. So that would be a conservancy district. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd report that because it just... Well, I'll just throw in the side about Morgan's estimates of, uh, for the capacity to <coughs> those dams. Tried to find the highest reported uh, storms <coughs> in you know record keeping and they found it uh, in the uh, one of the water sh big watersheds in Europe and they calculated what that would be and then they doubled it and <laughs> built the dams around Dayton for that yeah. and double recorded yeah, a friend of mine who is um, studying meteorology and went to a, a conference at Ohio State, um, a presenter there said that Dayton is the only major city in Ohio who's really prepared for a big one, for a big flood. So, yay Dayton. Mm -hmm. yay, yes. So that was at the general meeting? I mean, meeting Yeah, you know, meeting? They, have, they, have a, they do a whole bunch of business and then they have a presenter. Yeah. They, they were the presenters. Green County Regional Planning. Well... Put your memory bank hats on because Carrie Smith basically reported the whole meeting the last time she was here, mm -hmm. and it had to do with us and 
our zoning commission's two submissions for the for the zoning commission for the regional planning commission to review, which she reported that they did and re and accepted one and and sent back another one for revision. Uh, they, they didn't say, I don't think she sent it back to us for revision. No, sent they, it back to the Zoning Commission. No, no, I don't think, that wasn't my understanding that they sent it back for revision. I think they held it off for the next meeting. Oh, okay. I Is wasn't, sorry? I, I, unfortunately no. I wasn't there, so I was just They sent it back to our zoning? Reporting. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry if I didn't stick there. I'm, I'm glad to hear, I'd be glad to hear. Ms. Smith learned the RBC accepted the, per, the Zoning Commission's personal solar zoning changes and cable to temporary use permit. The RBC would like clarifications in the temporary use permit wording addressing conditional use, et cetera. The Zoning Commission will take up the matter at the June meeting. Oh, okay. Sorry, Chris. I didn't, I, I'm glad to know that because I had mis misheard it. So that's all I had done. Okay. Uh, Nothing new on Clifton Union Cemetery. We're we're due to have a meeting, but it's also planting season. So uh, I do. You know anything about whether a Union Cemetery is allowed to use the Star Fund investment system? I do not, however, as a political subdivision of the state of Ohio, I would think it would be. So who would we ask? The state auditor's office. State auditor's office, mm -hmm. not county? No. Okay. I wouldn't think so because the, I don't think the county auditor really directs anything to STAR. I think it's all through the state. Okay. Um, Yellow Springs Development Corporation? Um, their last meeting was actually a presentation to um, nearby friendly people and, uh, um, from MVRPC and other places. The, the kind of pitch they're going to give to um, different businesses that might be um, in, that might be located here, um, that might be spit off industries from the other ones, and their um, their their polished pitch to why their people would love to live in Yellow Springs, or more importantly their um, spin-off businesses would like to locate here. So unfortunately, I couldn't go to that meeting because I had had a very rough day. But um, I, and I haven't heard any feedback from that, but that's what happened. Well, a couple of us went to the Green County Township Association. Uh, I resigned from Five years uh, on the Solid Waste Policy Committee representing the Township Association. You received the plaque. They yes, said received the plaque. And then they took it back, gave it to me the next day at, <laughs> at the Policy Committee. Um, the presentation at the association was of the Ohio plan, <coughs> which is. I didn't know there instead was, of Oparma, yeah. you have choices. I, I didn't. I didn't um, know there was a, an alternative to Otarma, which mm -hmm. is our risk management or mm -hmm. not our, our risk insurance. I didn't. I never knew that, so that was interesting. And there were three or four different townships in the room that used that. They gave a hard sell. It sounded great. They seemed to have a lot of perks, but I'm not. We used them for about ten years. Oh, you did. Yeah. And then so we switched to Otarma. Yeah, um, we did, and it wasn't such a great. Experience. Okay, good. I mean, I'm 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 not looking for a new project, so I'm just reporting. We were commenting. That sounds like you had a. It wasn't the transition wasn't so great. This no, no, the transition was fine. It was just go ahead. It, it, it was getting service it, from Ohio plan. It, okay. it dealt with um, we had an ambulance that was wrecked and. It, we we definitely did not receive uh, good 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 financial backing for replacing that ambulance. We pretty much ate about sixty five thousand oh, yeah, dollars. Okay. So, so that Ohio plan did not come through. No. 
And they did promise a lot when <laughs> when they were selling it to us. Okay. So you were town right? You switched to them? And then no, we, we, we were with yes, Anderson sure. Williams in, yeah. in Xenia for many, many, many years until Dave Williams died, I guess. Yeah, that's right. And so then we kind of went out for bids, as it were, and Ohio Land was one of the ones who came to us and promised us the world. Only delivered a little bit. Okay. Um, anything from the National Area yeah. for me? Um, nothing except technical stuff that we don't really need to talk about in a public meeting. Uh, we don't have old business or new business identified. Right? Um, originally, Chris, when I brought up the idea of the consultant stuff today, your first get your first instinct was we're going to have an executive committee meeting, and then I was surprised that you brought it up in public and we actually voted on it in public. So do you still think we need an executive committee meeting? Probably not. I guess okay. I you know. Okay. okay. I got Thanks sidetracked Jeff. there. Yeah. But I, I I think we kept it to the level that the public. Oh was, yes, I think so too. I just want to make sure you didn't still think we needed yeah, one. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, if there's no other business, let's, we're adjourned. Thank you. Should we clap? We'll clap for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Cassidy.